Hello YouTube, I'm David Frankel and I'm at Altrincham, one terminus of a network that is now 57 miles long, stretching from Altrincham to Bury, Eccles to Ashton and Rochdale to Didsbury. The Manchester Metrolink system first opened in 1992, earning it the rank as the UK's first second generation tramway, reversing a decades old trend of decline and closure in light rail across the UK. So how did the Metrolink come about and why has it become the success that it has today? Join me on a journey through Manchester to explore the history of the Manchester Metrolink. When the Metrolink first opened in 1992, it consisted of the Bury and Altrincham lines, both converted heavy rail lines linked together through the city centre with a branch to Piccadilly. The tram therefore provided the first ever rail link between Manchester Piccadilly and Manchester Victoria stations. Behind me is the Audsill Court, which opened in 2017, linking Piccadilly and Victoria by heavy rail for the first time. The divide between Piccadilly and Victoria has been a serious problem for Manchester's transport planners for a long time. Manchester's north-south rail divide can be traced back to the Victorian times, where today's Piccadilly and Victoria stations were built by competing companies. This map of Manchester's passenger train services from the early 1980s shows just how pronounced this divide was. To get between Piccadilly and Victoria, passengers would have to walk or use a bus called Central Line. By the early 1970s, the ingredients for what was to become Manchester's great rail comeback were simmering. Transport planners began putting forward their solutions to solve this fundamental divide. Some of their suggestions, quite surprisingly for the time, were very ambitious. The Pickwick Tunnel network would see Manchester gain an underground railway system modelled off those in London and Glasgow. Much like London's deep tube lines, the Pickwick would have used existing railway lines to serve the suburbs and a new underground section to link Piccadilly and Victoria. The new core line under the city centre would have served Victoria, Market Street, Albert Square slash St Peter's Square, Princess Street, with a connection to Oxford Road, and Piccadilly. So, where is the Pickwick? The answer is because it was the 1970s. Nobody thought railways had any future, and the scheme was deemed way too ambitious and expensive, so it was scrapped in 1977. So by the start of the 1980s, we were back to square one. Manchester's railways were still divided and finding a solution became urgent. There were now two possible solutions. Solution 1. Build a light rail connection between Victoria and Piccadilly to replace the Central Line bus service. Manchester hadn't had trams since the closure of the Manchester Corporation tramways in 1949, as at the time buses were seen as the future. In fact, by the 1980s, Blackpool had the only tramway in the whole of the UK. The success of trams in major cities in Europe, however, in places such as Budapest, Prague, Vienna, Zurich and Berlin, showed that tramways could still play a role in the city's public transport system. Solution number two, stitch up the two rail networks in Manchester to allow all major services to run via Piccadilly instead of Victoria, thus uniting Manchester's rail services. They ended up doing both. To find out more about how the rail network was stitched together with most major services being redirected from Victoria to Piccadilly, check out the bonus video I made all about Manchester's railways, where I also discussed the northern hub, including the Oddsall Cord, and how the changes made in 1989 were partially reversed in 2018, and why it all went horribly wrong. The Central Line bus was made largely redundant by this reshuffling and further by the opening of the Metrolink, yet it actually continued to operate until 2002, when it was replaced with the free Metro Shuttle network. This was then rebranded to Freebus in 2018. But anyway, back to the Manchester Metrolink. The irony of this reshuffling is that, by the time the Metrolink actually opened, the urgent need to connect Piccadilly and Victoria had largely disappeared. Nevertheless, the system opened with much fanfare and was the first in a wave of new tramways across the UK. The Metrolink took over two heavy rail lines to Bury and Altrincham, with heavy rail services to Chester now using a previously freight-only branch between Stockport and Altrincham. Here at Navigation Road, Metrolink and heavy rail services run alongside each other. So although Metrolink's original purpose was to unite Piccadilly and Victoria, it today serves a number of different purposes. 
such as helping with development, reducing road congestion and serving as a low-cost medium with which to reopen disused railway lines. The system's opening saw the introduction of new Alsaldo Breda T68 trams. The network was owned initially by the Greater Manchester Public Transport Executive, GMPTE, which was restructured into today's Transport for Greater Manchester in 2011. Between 1992 and 1997, it was operated by a consortium known as GM Metro Limited, who were also responsible for the network's construction. From 1997 to 2007, the network was operated by Serco, then Stagecoach from 2007 to 2011, RATP, the Paris Metro operator, from 2011 to 2017, and finally, Keolis Army since 2017. This map shows the initially planned network, with several similarities and differences to the network that we know today. The first expansion of the network took place between 1999 and 2000 as part of a larger project to regenerate the former Manchester Docklands, as we've discussed already in a previous video. The Eccles line was the first non-converted Metrolink line outside of the city zone, running along the streets rather than on a converted railway line. The line runs through Salford Quays and then along Eccles New Road all the way to Eccles, terminating near the railway station. The Media City UK spur was added in 2010, serving the new BBC and ITV headquarters and the Lowry. The Berry and Altrincham line's origins as former railway lines explain why the Metrolink is unusual for a tram system in that it is fully high floored. It is because the former railway stations along the route, which at the time were the majority of Metrolink stops, were all high floored, so the decision was made to have the trams as high floored. The original T68 trams had retractable set steps for the city centre stops, many of which were originally built as bi-level platforms with a high section for wheelchair users. Market Street, High Street, St Peter's Square and Mosley Street were all originally built with bi-level platforms. The opening of the Eccles line required some changes to the trams, so the original T68 trams were modified with added bogey covers and coupler covers. These modified trams were known informally as the T68Ms, with the T68A trams joining the network in 1999 with these modifications coming pre-added. In 2009, the first M5000s joined the network, coinciding with the rebranding of the Metrolink into its current yellow-grey branding, replacing the original turquoise grey branding. The M5000s did not have retractable steps, so the city centre stops had to be modified. Market Street did not require modification as it had already been rebuilt in 1998 when Market Street and Piccadilly Gardens were pedestrianised after the 1996 bomb. When Market Street first opened, it only served trams towards Bury, with trams towards Piccadilly and Altrincham stopping at High Street, which was round the corner. Both stops were bi level. In 1998, High Street was closed and Market Street was rebuilt as a high-level, bi-directional platform. It was then rebuilt again in 2015 with this new canopy, and that sign has been faulty ever since. St Peter's Square was rebuilt in 2009 with fully high-level platforms. Piccadilly Gardens, although it already had a fully high-level platform, was also rebuilt. Shoot Hill was added to the network in 2003 to serve the new Shoot Hill bus station which opened in 2006, replacing a former station at Cannon Street which was destroyed in the 1996 bomb. Mosley Street, which was westbound only, was the last stop to retain its bi-level platform until it closed in 2013. The final T68 tram was withdrawn in 2014 and since then the network has operated solely with Bombardier Flexity Swift M5000s. The second city crossing project took place between 2015 and 2016, adding a second route between Victoria and St Peter's Square, the main purpose of which was added network resilience. A new stop was built here at Exchange Square. Victoria Station was also rebuilt with four platforms, two of which share a track as part of the overall rebuilding of the terminus section of the station, which also was part of the Northern Hub project. St Peter's Square stop was rebuilt in 2016 with four platforms, and Deansgate Castlefield was rebuilt in 2015 with three. Outside of the city centre, new Metrolink lines have been added as part of Phase 3, known as the Big Bang. The original plans for Phase 3 included the conversion of the Oldham Loop Line to Metrolink, serving Oldham, Shaw and Rochdale, 
a new line over the disused railway from Trafford to Stockport via Chorlton and Didsbury, a branch from that line to Manchester Airport via Withenshaw, a line from Pomona to Port Salford via the Trafford Centre, and an extension of the Piccadilly branch to Sports City, and then on to Ashton under line via Ashton New Road. To fund Phase 3 of Metrolink extension, the government planned them to introduce a Greater Manchester congestion charge. However, it was Stockport Council that insisted that it was put to a referendum. Because the congestion charge was voted against, Metrolink lost a lot of funding and they had to cut back on some of their extensions, including the Manchester Airport Loop and the extension of the East Didsbury Line to Stockport. Kind of a bit of revenge. One line that was cut back at first was the line that would start here at Pomona and go to Port Salford via the Trafford Centre. The other planned extensions did eventually go ahead, opening between 2010 and 2014. The Rochdale line became the third line on the Metrolink to run on a directly converted railway line, with trams running along the former Oldham Loop, except for the section between Victoria and Newton Heath, which was along a previously disused railway known as the Cheetham Hill Loop, and two sections in Oldham Town Centre and Rochdale Town Centre, where trams run along the street. A new depot was built at Old Trafford in 2013. The original depot here at Queen's Road is still in use. Abraham Moss, further up the line, was added to the Metrolink network in 2011. Up until 2013, there had been a staff-only stop at Queen's Road with a stub platform. Queen's Road stop was opened in 2013, replacing the temporary stop and also nearby Woodlands Road, which was closed on the same day. So that's how the Metrolink came to be as it is today. The next extension to open will be the Trafford Park Line as far as the Trafford Centre, a revival of the scheme that was originally cut due to the failure of the congestion charge due to open in 2020. But what's next for Metrolink? The only semi-confirmed future extension is at Manchester Airport, where the Metrolink is set to be extended westwards to serve the new Terminal 2 and then the new HS2 station. The possibility of extending this onwards via a modified version of the original Western Loop to Roundthorn is on the table as well, though the original Loop plan, which had stops at Davenport Green, Newark Green and Withenshaw Hospital, predated both HS2 and the rebuilding of Terminal 2, and so had no provision to serve either. The next few possible extensions are the extension of the East Didsbury Line to the originally planned terminus of Stockport, or maybe an extension of the Trafford Park Line towards the originally planned terminus of Port Salford, or maybe further. Another logical extension would be over the disused railway from Radcliffe to Bolton, which was originally included in the Pickwick plan. This could then be extended onto Wigan. A line to Middleton, branching off the Oldham Loop Line and running along a disused railway, could also be built. Middleton could alternatively be reached from a new line branching off the Berry Line at Bowker Vale. Or maybe an extension from St. Werburgh's Road to Fallowfield over part of the old Fallowfield Loop. Or perhaps an extension of the Eccles Line to Patrickroft, Worsley or Lee. Lee could also be reached by converting the guided busway to tram operation, as discussed in a previous video. Tram train is another possible route for future Metrolink extensions, depending on the success or failure of the extremely delayed Sheffield to Rotherham trial scheme, which finally opened in 2018. Routes earmarked for possible tram train operation in Manchester include Stockport to the airport, Salford Crescent to Wigan via the Atherton line, all the routes from Piccadilly to Hadfield, Glossop and Marple, the latter of which were all part of early Metrolink conversion proposals. The possibilities are endless. The Manchester Metrolink has proven to be a key part in the expansion and modernisation of Manchester as a city. It has become an integral part of Manchester's culture and has inspired a wave of new tramways across the country. And in 2017, Metrolink celebrated its 25th anniversary. So here's to the next 25 years. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.